also from Red Hat and uh, working on Neutron. And we would like to, to thank you first for coming. And, and we are going to talk about uh, how to debug uh, failures and how to use this little tool called Oslog Merger to, to hopefully help you in solve your problems. Well, some of them. Um, we all know that the distributed systems uh, have complex interactions, and in the case of OpenStack, this is certainly true. This is not a picture to scare people. This is an actual diagram of the architecture, the basic architecture of the different OpenStack components and how they talk one to one to another, uh, which is clearly complex. Uh, for example, let's see this complexity into something that we do every day, which is request uh, an instance. So you could make a request in your dashboard or through the CLI. The, so you could get, it could connect to Keystone to get the authentication. Then it could make the request to the Nova API. Nova API would confirm with Keystone that the authentication is correct. Then it could go to the database to check that whatever you've requested is right. So it can proceed. It makes the request to the uh, message broker, places the, in the queue the request. It goes to the scheduler. The scheduler does check again in the database and creates the entries it needs to, and then makes another request through the queue to the compute node that also access the database, uh, well, through the conductor, and then we start interacting with other components like, like LANs, Neutron, Cinder, and then in those interactions we have some com uh, Common goes like I send you a message, I wait, or I, I expect you to, to call me back. And inside each of those components, we also have complex uh, uh, flows. So even something as common as getting an instance is quite complex. It's not a simple uh, operation. So this, and this is not even taken into account if you deploy things in a cluster where you could get your request to your, to your HA proxy. It can go to any of, the, of your servers and then be delivered to one or more of your agents. Okay, this is not that difficult to follow. Okay, you can follow it. And then when we get the the, the response, uh, they can go to another server because there's really, it doesn't really matter. But it's, it's, it's getting harder to follow your, your request paths with this. And then you get a different request from the same flow and it goes through another server because it's balanced. So this, if you're trying to actually find which problem do you have, this is getting a lot messier, messier to, to follow. Uh, as we said, OpenStack is complex. It has a large number of components. Uh, those components have complex interaction between one another, but also complex um, flows inside of them. And on top of that, we have a lot of configuration options that could go wrong. And we have a lot of deployment possibilities, so we could have different backends, different hypervisors, network agents. It's complicated. So when you're trying to determine the root cause analysis of any problem you have, you know for a fact that most cases are non-trivial. You may be lucky and it's something easy to find, but it's usually not, because otherwise you would have probably done it correctly from the start and requires a lot of knowledge of the inside if you're trying to do log crawling through the different P 
pieces you have, the different components, the different services. You actually have to know where they are going next to be able to see where you want to follow that request. And it, you, you would usually have this centralized, all your logs, so it, usually it's easy er, to do, but in many, many cases, you don't have your logs centralized. You have them independently, and maybe you're, you just have a proof of concept you're testing, so they are not centralized, you, but you're testing it, you want to make sure everything is right, you, something's wrong, you have to go and check, and you start opening files, log files, trying to follow where the calls are coming and going, and like we said, you would have to jump through a lot of different files. So, first, a quick introduction. This is the OpenStack default format. It can be changed, but it's not very common to change it. Uh, the most important part right here is the date and time, because what we are trying to, to do is go from separate files that you have your logs to something with an alias that will order them correctly and would also let you know from which file those logs came from so you can specifically go there and check for anything if you need to. So this, makes, this would make it easier to, to follow them and to follow the, 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 all the requests and that's where OS log merger comes in. It was born out of frustration of trying to actually debug complex scenarios with HA, active active, and how everything interacted. And mostly in, it has been tested for production, but also where cases where you only receive the, logs, the log files, you receive a bunch of log files from a customer, and you're like, okay, there are a lot of nodes, there are a lot of logs, and you start trying to crawl through them, jump from one to another, trying to figure out where the problem is, and then follow the path. Uh, so this tool, it's a simple tool. It will not solve all your problems, but hopefully it will help you make it easier to, to follow the, the logs. What the functionality currently has is it allows to merge OpenStack format file, log files, uh, var log messages, and time delta logs like DMS. Um, it can get files locally on from a URL. If you get it from a URL, it will cache the data. For example, if you're trying to, to debug something that has failed on the CI gate, you could get the files. The idea of the cache, caching it is in case you first only retrieve a couple of, of logs. You think that the problem is only in Cinder. You only retrieve Cinder logs, and then you realize that you need more logs because it, apparently the problem is with interaction with Nova, so you don't have to, and you, increase, you add those to, your, to the call to always log merger, and, and you don't need to retrieve all the files again. Uh, alias definition, that is how we will be identifying each of the long entries, can be done manually. You specify, you give a specific alias. You can, it can use the, the file name directly or it can generate automatically the names as it sees fit, trying to make them consist, uh, small and easy to read. Uh, it supports multi-log entry and it can run for speed or, or reduce memory footprint, which takes slightly longer to, to sort the, the files. So installation, you can install it from PyPy. You can install it directly from master or if you're in a customer environment, where you don't have virtual LM, you don't have pip, you have basically almost nothing. You can directly download the file and just run it. Let's see uh, a use case. You have this structure. Someone has sent you a bunch of uh, a tar file with this structure, and you just you have node two, node three, and you just want 
to, to browse this in a sequential order. You just need to make the call to log merger here. Okay, dash A3 means that it's going to do auto aliasing to the best, uh, to make it as, as short as possible. The ML option will change the, um, is to specify uh, var log messages files. Uh, then we specify delta time file, and finally the, the log files. As you can see, it's using blob to, to include all the nodes, and from all the nodes, the different components we're interested in, and this could create something like this, where the date is, the timestamp is preserved, we don't alter it, so it's, get, it's easier to locate in the original file it needed. So, and then you get the alias that is, has been reduced from the, from the directories. In, in this case, it has only kept the, the number of the node because the node was common in all of them, the node part of the path. Customer has been removed as well. And we ha see the alias with Cinder API, uh, Quantum Agent, Cinder Scheduler, uh, Cinder Volume, etc. And they could all be in order, so it makes it easier to filter what's in the file, to follow our request through, through all your logs and everything. Now we can see uh, an easy example of merging files from the gate where we are actually specifying uh, the alias manually. We define a base for all the files, like all files are going to be here in this URL, that's the base. We define the extension, the postfix of those files, and then you define the, the path within that uh, base. Uh, and the colon and the uh, alias. So this could get those files, merge them to, uh, with, with those specific aliases. Uh, this is where the caching would be useful if you suddenly wanted to add a new file because you see that you're missing some interactions. Uh, now we are jumping to the fun part, which is actually using this for something. And we're going to see how you can do it. Okay. So uh, I'm jumping into a little uh, live demo. My colleagues always tell me, please don't do live demos. <laughs> but I like it. So I hope it's a reasonable size. Um, if you use, uh, this is an example of how to uh, leverage this to, to go through that kind of uh, log mess in, in, uh, in the gate. Uh, if you are a developer and you submitted a patch and you are trying to debug a multi-node, um, uh, a multi-node uh, failure, uh, you can use this. This is, I think, uh, this is the um, the review number, and uh, you can you can get that from the review output. So, if we run this, uh, in the, in this case, the HTTP requests uh, are cached locally, so it's now it's processing all the logs to to put them together, and 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 you get. Uh, Uh, you get everything uh, in, in a single log. The compute node uh, messages, the OpenB switch messages, and so you can go straight to the place where you are finding the issue or, or correlate to your, the specific log failure and, and maybe the request number. You could filter by the request number, for example. And and see what happened uh, across the service, across the services. 
Um, I, I don't want to go in the details uh, of that blog because it was a mess. But yeah, bef before this, I, I remember uh, long sessions of uh, having an editor with five open windows and jumping through logs, and the, it was horrible. So, okay. Uh, after that, I'm going to explain um, how how can we put this together with Ansible to to travels for for travel shooting. So uh, it's uh, we can do this in a, in an automated way. Uh, if you have a, a deployment that it uh, uh, that is experiencing a failure and you know how to reproduce that. Uh, and you can try it on the uh, an, an staging environment or give it to a customer because you are providing support for that deployment. Uh, you can automate the whole thing and uh, get get the results, uh, find what's happening, but also you can leverage that to, to make sure that if you are trying a bug fix, uh, uh, it, it's it's really working, and you can do it automatically. Um, so, basically, in in this um, small methodology that I'm going to give here, uh, we use uh, Ansible to, um, to to orchestrate the manipulation of the host, uh, setting a debug, uh, restarting services to, to take the debug flag, introducing props in 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 the system to to augment the information that we have, for example, uh, pinging from one side of the network to another or to a floating IP of an instance or getting uh, the ARP tables in certain nodes or uh, more complex stuff that I'm going to show later. And yeah, and finally, uh, when we reproduce the issue, we grab the logs uh, from, from the different hosts we put them together in, in the way that we find more reasonable for our debugging purposes. And that's it. So I, I will go quickly through this. I, 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 I don't want to go too much into the details. You will have the link up to the presentation later. Uh, but um, basically, uh, this is very simple Ansible. Uh, you. Uh, we use it to to configure the the debug the debug flag uh, on the uh, on the nodes. In this case, for Neutron and Nova, because we were looking at uh, Nova Neutron issue during live migration. So the next thing is uh, doing a a simple uh, hack to rotate the logs. So we start fresh on the logs and we restart the, the services uh, to make sure that they pick up the debug flag and that they start with the new log file. And the same for the for the compute nodes. Basically, yeah, this clear the, clears the logs, restart the, the specific services, the OpenB switch agent and the Nova compute. And then in, this was to, to reproduce the, the issue that we were trying to debug. It was a, a light migration from one node to another, and there was a hidden race condition between Nova and Neutron. Nova was, in, at the time, Nova was starting the VM uh, before the underlying network was configured, so the VN was starting and sending a network announcement of uh, reverse ARP packet saying, I'm here. So the network topo topology will discover that new place for the instance and, and reconfigure everything. But since the network was not properly configured, uh, the, that notification, that packet got nowhere. So uh, the, the final result was that the VM 
apparently it was taking like one minute or two minutes to 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 be available again on the network regardless of being active and apparently working so once we finish uh, reproducing the issue we just uh, fetch the logs locally to the to, to our host uh, with the uh, synchronized action and the the final step is uh, get, getting them merged uh, in a in a single one and looking for your problem so one one of the the, inter the interesting things that that uh, you can do to to get a more meaningful uh, uh, more meaningful information especially in, in the network context where things can be uh, very complicated sometimes is is introducing profs like as i say as i said uh, pingers or something to dump the flows of uh, openb switch um NetProv, which is a helper which we have uh, recently introduced, uh, which I will explain, and or anything that you want, as long as it uses the the OpenStack log format, uh, you can put them together. And I will show you a, a very simple uh, three lines example of how to do that with with anything on your system. Um, so we introduced this this small tool. It's again a, a, it's a standalone one py one Python file, so it doesn't have any dependencies, and you can upload it to any host as long as you have Python. And, and in this case, TCP dump is going to work for you. Uh, it watches the um, the network namespaces and and the network interfaces in 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 the host with where you started and when it finds um, known patterns like uh, router interface for, from neutron or a, um, an instance uh, tap device or a DHCP port is going to start logging the, um, the control traffic on, on that interface uh, get all the messages from all the TCP dumps that it's starting into a single log and write it to a file. So in the end, it will write something like this, like uh, in this case, it, it found uh, an interface in a DHCP namespace, uh, namespace, it's logging it, and then the packets will look like this. It, they didn't fit in the screen, so I, I cut them, but uh, basically, any, any packet will show here in the in the TCP down format, and you have the uh, interface name here. And those are the um, the default settings, uh, like which kind of interfaces it, it, it's going to look for. But you can configure them in the command line and uh, the default TCP dump filter, like I'm logging the most controlled traffic for DHCP, uh, ICMP or ICMP6, and ARP, and writing everything to, to this place. But you can, you have the, the command line and you can modify those parameters uh, here, 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 so you can make it work for you. And uh, this is a very simple example of how to, how to grab um, something in your system that you want monitored uh, together with all the other logs that you are getting. So it's just uh, uh, a matter of putting your uh, your command here or a function that loops doing whatever and then uh, applying the, this this small wrapper to to open the uh, i mean to prepend the the open stack log format 
so uh, yeah, and this is this is an example of how to um, how to upload this net probe uh, to the system and, and start it. I, I make sure that I kill it. Uh, please, <laughs> uh, my my bash abilities are very low. So probably there's a much better way of doing that, but it 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 works. It, it's just an example of yeah. Uh, killing any old prop that you have on the system, copying the netprof script and starting it. So you will have the logs available in the end. You have links here to to some of the um, to some to some examples. I, I'm going to show you how it looks to um, to use uh, an Ansible script on a, on a deployment. It's a single node deployment, so <laughs> because my laptop couldn't take much more. But let's go. It's an all in one and debug. Calling one, and I think that that's it. Yeah, I, I in in this one I, first I clean up all the resources that I already had on the system before setting the debug flag and restarting services. It waits for the resources to be properly clean up. Um, now it's restarting the services with the debug flag to get them also right in, in the new log file. And yeah, that copied and started the, this network prop that I was talking about. And now it's creating like two, two networks, two routers, uh, two VMs, and, and waiting for them to to come up. I, I'm actually looking into the into the netprop log to to find the DHCP request. So until I don't get sorry now the DHCP request and I see MP uh, workload that I set on the VMs. So until I don't see the ICMP, I don't I, I keep waiting. So in the end, it finished. It retrieved the, all the all the log files locally. I have them here. Uh, so I have here all the logs that the, this uh, VM had, and finally the um, the logs after going through log merger. If I look, for example, for a boot p request, sorry, I'm going to chop the lines. If I look for the boot p request, uh, we can see that. Right after uh, um, Nova Compute uh, spawns the instance and starts resume, resumes, starts the, the instance, we can see the instance uh, requesting the HTTP. Uh, this is the the instance tab. This is the router getting the <laughs> the DHCP request, but he's not able to respond. This is the DHCP agent. Uh, Port getting the request, and this is the DHCP agent responding to the to the request with the instance IP address, the point three in this in this case. Uh, this is the instance getting it. So after a while, we are going to see um, the ist the instance looking for the router address, like. Uh, it's, it's asking where, where is, uh, what's the MAC address of my router? The router responds, I'm here, and that happens because the instance is trying to get the to do to do a metadata request. So we can see that after finding the router address, is is doing the metadata request. We see the neutron metadata service, and that goes to neutron that 
also goes to to Nova at some point, uh, and we can it, we can follow the the whole. Okay, I, I think that if I do. I, I filter it too much, but yes, that was the instance asking for all the metadata requests from through the whole chain. It has to do to uh, the router, it has to go to the neutral metadata service, to Nova, and many, many things happen. So, so that, that was it. Uh, what, what's missing on, on on this project, uh, we want to to move it to 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 stack forts because now we are on GitHub. Maybe get other other contributor other contributors. I started and Gorka joined me because he found it interesting, and uh, we also um, want to add maybe some more filtering up op uh, options and make it easier to use with the uh, gate, mainly because we are developers and, and we find it uh, useful. Uh, we also want to make like a, a small Ansible uh, generator, like uh, that it could be able to discover the, the hosts that you have, and maybe by looking at the neutron agents or maybe by looking at uh, of your under cloud if you are using triple or, or something like that and also provide more profs this is a network prof maybe some we uh, we are open to to ideas and also maybe making a version for the gate because in the gate as developers we have like a uh, like a log viewer that works in JavaScript, but it's only able to handle one dog, and maybe it could be cool to have to have it handle several of them. And that's it. If you have any questions, feedback, ideas, so uh, please go to the microphones. And thank you for coming. Okay. Hey. Is that working? <laughs> yeah. I was just wondering about, you mentioned briefly about um, uh, centralized logging. I'm curious how this would work with, uh, you know, doing everything centralized. I've been trying to work on a project where that's very complex with five uh, controllers and a VIP and everything is, everything is HA. It's very, very big, but it's a huge mess. And so it's very, very difficult to, to get uh, merge logs that are useful without having to, you know, manually dig through every single thing. Well, the, the idea here is that if you, this is for when you don't have centralized log. If you have centralized via Elk or via, you know, FluentD or any other mechanism, this is not really useful. Yeah, but, but yeah th this is something also that we wanted to, to look at uh, because yeah, this is a first step for when you don't have uh, any centralized log thing yeah, we're, to, to we're work with. We're definitely looking at things like L3 yeah, but, log or whatever, but yeah, uh, right now some, we don't Something that I want to look at is being able to integrate with that kind of uh, centralized uh, log systems to do queries, like, okay, maybe I want this, now this, now this service, this service, this service, and in this time frame and get something meaningful. I get maybe having a, I don't know if a separate tool based on this or, or maybe a command line for that, that. Yeah, but I think what you were asking is if we have a, a solution to the uh, merging of your logs in your environment uh, dynamically, like live, right? Or? Uh, well, something like that would be more like Elk stack or something, yeah. right? But, but uh, I was thinking, just being able to to dig through programmatically and, uh, would be useful. I mean, once you have everything merged, and you're using something like Elk stack, that's kind of out of the scope of this. Yeah, right. But so. something that would be able to probe through, you know, right when you have an error, right when you're having issues or something. 
would be really useful too. To, to jump directly to that specific part, you mean? Well, to be or able to track down once you find a request ID, for instance, yeah. and be able to dig through the whole stack and find where, you know, where this failed, that type of a scenario. Oh, right, yeah. But that I think there are, there are some efforts working on, on that, on root cause analysis, trying to determine from an error why that happened. Mm -hmm. and, but I really don't know the specific or at what stage they are at, but I know they are working on that. Things like, if your database fails and, uh, and everything starts failing, to, to not report the small log errors, just report that the database is down. It's also they are also trying to do uh, root cause analysis, by detecting the error and determining where it's coming from, but I don't know the, the status at this point. What is useful is the um, the mechanism to, to pass the, the request from one service to another that we have. So you can actually have a common request where, I don't know if it's completely yeah. implemented, but there is a mechanism to, for an, when Nova calls Cinder, for example, to pass the, uh, the original request so you can in the logs follow, it, follow them easier. So you don't have to actually do it manually like, okay, here Nova made the call, let's see which call appears in Cinder at that time. Right. So we, I know there are efforts, I don't know if they've completed the work because they were quite... There was an update earlier since I began today, and I think part of it has been that this thing has been connected into Java. Yeah. You know, but there's still ways to go. Right? Yeah, there are places to go because there, there, it wasn't as easy as, we all originally thought like, okay, you, make, you just need to add the original request. Yeah, but we have forks, we have, so when you actually start looking into it, it's a lot more complex, but. Yeah, it can be a, a tree of calls. That yeah. We, we, we didn't work it too long, right? Yeah, yeah, but, but there, I think that a fork would probably be easier, more helpful to, to actually locate because it's, you look at the, the original error, you know the original request, you filter by die request on all your logs, and if you use something like this, like merge everything, and filter by the original request because all the requests from that tree will have it, then you have a sequential order of events that are easier to follow, I think. I hope we have been uh, able. Excuse me, I have a question. Uh, isn't there any uh, splitting capability uh, of uh, splitting log, uh, splitting output? Uh, do you uh, mean if we have a capability of s splitting the logs? Yes, or? Uh, for example, per, uh, per request or uh, per um, yeah. period. Yeah, no, no, no. not yet. That, that's one of the th things that I also wanted to look at. That, mm -hmm. uh, be because yeah, the fil we, filtering the, lo the final yeah. logs, I mean that. Because we usually just filter it, for example, if you're with less, you just filter, you just build yeah, your I, filter in the viewer, like Miguel yeah, probably yeah, for, is going to. Generally, when I, when I do this, I open, I open it with less, and if I want to see uh, the neutron services, I can do this. Mm -hmm and that's going to give me all the neutron services, or if I want the... Um, uh, if I want the Nova, uh, for example, Nova API and... Uh, Maybe this is not the, okay. the file, but you use, we use, the reason why we didn't implement it at the beginning, the mm -hmm. filtering, is because we usually do the filtering with less or whichever editor you're using. You just build a query of your, of your filter there. For example, if you want a request, a specific request, you say filter by request, and if you also want to include a specific node, you use the pipe, and you add more stuff that you want to filter by, and then you only view that, the, the view is only that. But it is something we are considering, yes, adding filters to actually okay, thank limit. You. Okay. Actually, my question is kind of, you know, 
just related to the previous gentleman and him, is you know we have a cloud which is really huge. We have distributed services and tools like this really help because you know you want to aggregate all the logs. But the challenge that I face is even you know so first thing is you have to figure out where the request is going. So if I'm making a volume create, right, like it can fall on one of the Cinder, you know, controllers, basically Cinder VMs essentially, which we are running. Uh, the second thing is, um, and that was coming to the filtering, right? Uh, simple filtering does not help, at least in my case, uh, which I've seen is if I'm just doing a simple grep or, you know, trying to figure out, so let's say I create a volume and I find the volume <coughs> fail. You know, you try to look at the logs and try to search for the volume ID, right, in the logs to filter. But, you know, the logs, uh, when some error happens, usually you see, uh, you know, let's say a request is sent, right? So you would see a call request. But then, you know, it misses all the part because sometimes not the whole log has the, uh, you know, UUID of the volume. So actually, and most of the tracebacks that show up, like they don't have any UUIDs. It's just a big traceback. <laughs> so usually when I grab, like, you know, have some simple filtering tools, like I actually miss out on those tracebacks. So I have to, the only way I can do it is I just have to go into the logs and then, you know, um, find out the UUID and then traverse through the logs. Yeah, usually um, you locate so the UUID and then you re the request that it is in that UUID correct. and filter by that and then you filter on those and then you mark the specific location where you say, oh, here there is a traceback and I miss it. So you mark it, you hit MA for example to mark it, you undo the filter and you look, yeah. It's yeah, but it'd be nice to have a tool which kind of, you know, does that for you because, you know, it takes yeah. a long time to figure that out. Yeah, the, so, the thing is, yeah. we feel your pain yeah. because yeah. we've done it. So, so yeah. So but, I have a similar tool, like, which is internally I kind of use, and I would like to kind of, you know, uh, collaborate with you oh, guys. Cool. If you have yeah, something, yeah. so I'll Should follow be great. up with you afterwards. Sure, yeah. sure. The thing about the, the more advanced filters is that it's something we want to do, but we know that as soon as we get in, in the code, the, the common, the parent, request ID, everything will be so easy that it's like, eh, if, it's, if they are going to have it done in three months, uh, do we want to spend more time on this to get the filters and, and do everything if we are going to get so much more with the, with the requ common request ID? So, yeah. Yeah, but uh, I suppose that maybe uh, another tool on top of this, like a log navigator specifically built for OpenStack could be interesting, like maybe help you filter the things in real time because, yeah, you don't want to go back to the command line and change your filter, but you want to navigate, select stuff, and move around. But, yeah, we also have other good, good already good tools for that, but I don't know if good enough. So, okay. Well, so thank, thank you. you very much.